Hello, today we're going to be looking at the Archdroid class and we're going to be playing on a randomly generated map. So this is our random map setup. We want a kind of a short, intense battle. So we're going to choose eight players and we're going to have a small map. So it's going to be kind of like a knife fight in a cupboard. And to speed things up a bit, we're going to choose a battle scenario. So we start with a nice big army so we can get straight into the action. We've also got some advanced settings that we're going to have a look at, the geography of the place. Now, we're going to be playing with Draconians today, so we want a nice sort of dragon-friendly environment, which means lots of tropics, temperate's good, no arctic, don't want any snow, no blighted, it's a goblin thing, a couple of volcanoes here and there, can't hurt, and yeah, let's have a bit of water down by the beach. And I think that should be okay for now. Next. Now, because it's a random map, all of our leaders, our enemies, have been set up randomly as well, so we're going to see who we can choose. Now, we're planning today to show off Reskar, the Draconian Archdruid. Reskar Scapeshafer. We're going to customize him a little bit. We can sort of mess about with him a bit. You can see there's a female Reskar, male Reskar. And, you know, maybe give him a hat. Nice crown. No, not that. Very 80s. No. Okay, nice crown there. And maybe give him a new horns, new set of horns. Lots of horns. Uh, yeah, stick with these ones. I like those. Yeah, very manly. And off we go. Let's get into the world. Okay, here we are in our freshly created world with Reskar in this little hat. So this is going to be a free-for-all battle. So somewhere nearby on this map, there are going to be seven other players. It's not the biggest map in the world, so we're going to run into them quite quickly. So we best get prepared for battle. Now, here's our starting city, Reskar, here in his capital of Nishirstur, which I don't speak Draconian very well, I'm afraid. Here he is, and he's got with him some Draconian flyers. He's a very powerful Draconian infantry, one of the best units that Draconians themselves can make. For the Draconian Eldo, it's a kind of priest, and some Draconian archers who throw fireballs at people, like a little AoE attack. Also down here, we've got another secondary army. We've got some shamans. They're a special arch druid unit. They can charm animals, um, paralyze people, and throw poison bolts. Oh, and it looks like they're invisible in swamp, mountain, and forest. And they can swim. Sort of all around survival types, kind of like Bear Grylls, but a dragon. And what else? Oh, and someone's come to say hello. Shane. Shane the Pathfinder, who's also an arch druid. He wants to help us spread nature across the world. Right, you can come along, Shane. Okay, now, first things first, um, select production. So this is our city. Um, let's make some draconian hatchlings. These are like a very basic draconian unit, very cheap, very quick. Um, babies, the draconian babies that we're gonna send into battle. But the good thing about them is they evolve. If we can rank them up to gold, they will turn into a bigger, more powerful, grown-up draconian. So, you know, it's a tough life for a Draconian, but, you know, if they grow up, then straight into the army. And what else? Also want to do some research. Now, Draconians and Archdruids, in fact, are big on summoning. So you can see here, one of the skills we can learn is Summon Eldritch Animal. That's a mid-tier summoning spell that will let us bring in new units to the battle. Eldritch, or sort of magical bat creatures, so I imagine things like, um, I think there's a gigantic poisonous pig we can summon. Yeah, let's get that. Gigantic poisonous pigs. And let's see what magic we start with. Ooh, we've already got one of the summon spells, summon wild animal. Fertile domain is quite useful economic spell. Our cities will grow faster. Sunburst, that's just blow people up on the world map. Always fun. And to begin with, in the tactical map, we can throw spears at people. Also nice. What have you got, Shane? Shane can also throw spears at people and rust machines. Right, so here we are. So I'm go exploring. Looks like there's some a farm over here. The farm is guarded by some nymphs and a fairy. Yeah, well, I don't think we're really, really going to much of a match for our mighty draconian forces. Auto combat splat. Thank you. And ooh, a doggy. We've got a fray dog. And some magical slimy shoes of merit. What do they do? Blight weakness and wetland walking and defense. Okay, so they make us tougher. But they also make us more vulnerable to poison damage. And we can walk through swamps more easily. Okay, I'll take it. And we've got a doggy. Our first of many in our army of animals. We'll call him Rover. And he can come with us. 
Right, keep going north, see what else we can find. Looks like we found some ancient ruins. Now, as you can see, we get different prizes from different structures. So hopefully, if we come over here, this ancient ruins, we can um, get something a bit better than some horrible mud-covered shoes. And Shane, you can make a little secondary army, so you can join together with this guy. What's his? You, what are you? Draconian Raptor. Dragons riding more dragons into battle. Excellent. And you can take a couple of shamans and a couple of flies with you. Okay, and you guys stay here and guard the capital. Right, off we go. North. To glory. Ooh. I see an enemy. Or maybe is it... Who is it? Quaska. Quaska Root Healer. Another Archdruid. Archdruid City around here. Let's have a look. Well, since she's, you know, our buddy in nature, we don't need to immediately declare war. Maybe we can sort of make peace with her? Maybe she can be our, um, our faithful ally, taking on the world. So, yep, peace treaty, send proposal. Have to wait till next turn for her to respond. And let's go to the next turn. Okay, our first of our new draconian hatchlings is coming along. Make another one for now. And let's go up here. Into this ruins. Okay, now this is a special kind of battle. We can only bring the stack that stood on the ruins into battle. So poor Rover is going to have to wait outside. Okay, let's go in and see what we can do. Okay, piggy, doggy, and a troll to battle. Okay, here we are. We're in some ancient ruins. And what are we going to... There's our... Ogre over there, the piggy, and it looks like Rover's got a little one of Rover's buddies is over at the back there, big hairy wolf thing. Right, now, since we're archdruids and friends with all of the animals and creatures, we have the ability Befriend Animal, which has a 55% chance of making us a new piggy pal. Let's have a go. Come on, piggy pal. Yes! Right! You're with us now. You can sit with Rover. We'll have our own little zoo following us around into battle. Okay, now we can only use that once a turn. So it looks like this guy over here is a bit dead. Okay, now this is only a level one animal and against a tier three draconian fly, he doesn't have much of a chance. We can forget about him. This guy over here though is slightly more of a problem. He's also tier three, regenerating, dedicated to evil and quite tough 17 damage per blow so what we want them to do is him to run come to us give it hit, hit somebody and then we can gang up on him and take him all down at once bring the archers up in support we want to make sure that they can't be he can't get up to them because he'll probably attack the squishiest person first if he can and have a priest over here the priest has an ability called dragon ancestry protects us against fire but more importantly Sets gives us a sort of flaming weapon ability. So now, our attacks do fire damage. Right, and turn. See where he comes. Come on, Mr. Ogre. What are you going to do? Ah. Come up to hit Reska. Little does he know the terrible, terrible fate I have in store for him. First, come in and backstab him with our Draconian infantry. You can see he does an awful lot of damage, but he's only got 22 hit points left. And Reskar's got his number. Donk. <laughs> and we win. Okay, another victory for the forces of nature. Here's Porky. He's with us now. He can hang out with Rover. And prizes. We get a human civic guard. This is a very low-level human unit. A melody of oblivious harmony. Gives us high morale. Okay, well, that's interesting. Let's have a look at that. Let's take that. Okay. Equip that. Oh, we just carry it with us. We don't even need to equip it. Okay. Oh, look. We have one happy Reskar. So you can see here that Reskar, since he's won a battle, and since he has this magical book of happiness, he has, he has very high morale, which means that as soon as he gets into a fight, he's more likely to give critical hits and things like that. So that's good. And here's a little buddy, new little human ally hiding in this mountain. Send him over to guard the home base. And walk here. I'm going to stand over here. Oh, taking a bit of a detour. Rover. And 
looks like you're out of move points for this turn. And back over here, it looks like we are now at peace with Quaska. She has accepted our proposal. Okay, now, peace is nice, but let's see if we can take it any further and see if we can actually get an alliance with her. Now, currently, her relationship is polite, so maybe we need to give her something which will make her like us a bit more. We can't give us her capital. Can you give her money or gold or mana or something? No. Or we could give her the slimy shoes of poison. I think we should give her the slimy shoes of poison. Women love slimy shoes of poison. I know these things. And an alliance proposal. There you are. Send a proposal. I'm sure that's going to go down like a house on fire. And Shane, what are you up to? Okay, looks like you've got a bandit camp here. We should kill that for our little uh, for our new ally hopeful new ally this will spawn brigands which will attack us every turn so it's always good to get rid of that Pop. okay and we get hat uh cowl of the whatever that word is we'll just take that and uh, what does it do it's bringer of goodwill all units in the heroes army game volunteer Ooh. okay so this is going to reduce our upkeep costs so if you take a look at this guy, normally he would cost us 16 gold a turn, now he's only costing us 8 gold a turn. Nice. And, oop, Bob the Orc. Go and guard the homestead. Keep heading north. See, we got over here. Gold mine. Come on, Jane, hurry up. <gasps> Units tremble in fear before me. They are trying to flee the battle. What are we going to do? Well, they are elves, and elves are very foresty, and... I do like elves. On the other hand, I really dislike mercy. So we'll just choose no mercy, an act of evil, is what this little red sign means. Oh. And bye guys. Sucks to be you. And oh. <gasps> they killed my dragon. Well, I'm glad I didn't show you any mercy. Oh, and we got some free gold. Anyway, now that was an act of evil. So if you look over here, you'll see our current alignment is neutral. They do not like the fact we hunted down fleeing guards, and we apparently have killed something that's dedicated to good. However, we've also killed something which is dedicated to evil, so you know, it all balances out in the end. Circle of life and whatnot, and they keep wandering over here and... Oh, another independent city. Well, well, we'll deal with them later. It's just some orcs and a little pile of mud hovels. Okay. Oh, Shane's leveled up. Hello, Shane. So he's got some new skills, we can give him some stuff. Ooh, Savage Rage, an ability which buffs some animals, but unfortunately he's not with the animals, so... Um, we'll just give him... Befriend Animal, always good, always need more animal friends. And we'll make him a bit tougher, more melee strength, power. Okay. Okay, now, back over here. Looks like it's time to end our turn. Okay, so we were going to explore to the south. We'll send our little zoo crew. Rover and Porky, go down here and see what they can find. Okay, well they're out of move points. Shane, okay, now, two options here. The Orcs, we could oh, pay them, give them some money, how much would they want? They'd want 35 gold, open borders, generally a nice thing to do, you know, making peace. Alternately, we could just rampage in there and steal their stuff, which is what we're going to do. Okay, bye, free cities for me. Thank you very much. Once again, you'll notice, evil declared war. But now we have a nice new city. It's occupied, so we'll just, um, well, since we're here, we'll migrate at Draconians. I don't really like orcs very much. Always need more dragons. Yep. And once again, even more evil. We're going to start growing horns in a minute. Oh, we've already got horns. Good. Anyway, um, and turn again. <gasps> Quaska. She declined our proposal. Hateful. It could have been beautiful, Quaska. It could have been beautiful. You brought this up yourself. Okay. Anyway. Piggies. Next turn. Um, don't really care. Right. My alignment has changed to evil. <laughs> Apparently, the game is not impressed with my rather free-form approach to morality. So anyway, continuing our little trip south. Looks like our little piggy buddies have hit a bit of a roadblock. As powerful as a pig and a wolf travelling together on a happy goodwill adventure are, oh, they're not quite powerful enough to take on this small army gold in this gold mine, so they're going to need some support before they can break in there. And you guys are a little bit too far away, unless we can send the flies. Flies move pretty quick. Can you get rid of this Boop, boop, boop. Looks like it. Looks like you can just make it 
no turn to attack, we can attack next turn. And over up here, we've got our new city. Um, I guess we should probably guard our new city against our newfound enemy. <laughs> I assume that she's going to be quite upset over my sudden declaration of war. And... Uh, can we invade? Is that the same thing to do? No, she has a bigger army than me and she's got wooden walls. So we'll just, um, yeah. Let's run back over here and hide. <laughs> and what's going on down here? Okay. Right, I think since we've got this cleared this up here, we can actually make a builder and send it up there to make a fortress. And that will get us 10 more knowledge to help us research things faster. Oh, speaking of research, some an eldritch animal has been researched. Excellent. So the next thing along the chain of units we can build is produce shaman. Always nice, but I think we want druidry. We want more sp casting points, so that will speed up how quickly we can summon things. Summon eldritch animal. Three turns, 80 mana. Off we go. Okay, so we'll have to wait for that. And... Over here. Go guard it. I think you're going to have an angry dwarf coming to visit you soon. Anyway. Um... Don't ask me this again. Leave me alone. Right. Okay, so looks like a little zoo crew. Can I up? <laughs> yeah, right. Bye. <laughs> Auto combat. Die. <gasps> Porky. No. Oh well. He who lives by the sword dies by the sword. And we get some gold. And we get a gold mine. I suppose it's a it's a fair exchange. You will be remembered, Porky. You will be remembered. <gasps> and we found another player. Who are you? Odrin. Another elf. Didn't end well the last time we met an elf. But let's see. What are you? <gasps> He's a dreadnought. Dreadnoughts aren't very big on nature. I don't think this is going to end well for you, is it, Mr. Odrin? Not well at all. Okay, so we'll just move into his territory here. A gold mine here, so if we sit on top of that, we'll cut off some of his income and... Wow, he's got a big army. He's got elves with griffins, elves with guns, elves with unicorns, and a tank. And a war robot. Good. I think we might have to come back a little bit later, but don't you worry. Audrin will fall when I return with my army of dread spider queens, giant eagles, horned gods, and dire penguins. <laughs>